Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Our panel today is about conversational AI for your dealership phones and supporting your service advisors and BDC teams with a digital voice assistant that eliminates hold times and answers your customers' calls in just one ring. Sounded good to be true? With us today is a panel that includes Jocelyn Baudet, the founder and CEO of Stella Automotive AI, Ed Roberts, the COO of Bozard Ford Lincoln, Sean Butler, the Fixed Ops Director at Yamansky Automotive Group, and Michael Weldon, the Fixed Ops Director at Hansel Automotive Group. Everybody, welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thank you, Ted. Glad to be here. To uh, Ed, you. you've been a part of this conversation now uh, for some time, and you've seen a lot happening. Here we are at the end of January, um, you know, already into the year. A lot of change occurring, a lot of new awareness. Um, what do you see as the the pressing needs and issues and things we need to be aware of on the retail side? Well, our opportunity is always to meet customers at their needs. And uh, here we are at the end of January. We're rolling into 23. And that we got the same things in front of us as far as meeting customers on their terms and making sure that we fill the voids. And with, uh, with, with Stella... They answer the phone for us. They fill the voids of when we need to do different things. They they have predictive answering. So there's so many things that can tie together to help our advisors be free to, to serve the customer in front of them rather than have to put them on pause and answer a phone call from a ringing phone or various different things there. And Ed, you're really a trendsetter on meeting the customer at their terms with all the work that you're doing, the good work on mobile service. Um, do you see phones as being a big part of that equation, especially on the service side? Well, phones are already a last resort for a customer. They should be able to do most everything online. And then if we can't meet them when they do call us, because that's kind of a last resort, whether they're at a roadside event or they, they need to make a quick appointment while they're driving down the road or whatever. If we can't take care of those things when we need to, then we're failing them right from the beginning. So those are the, the phone is the opportunity to be at our best because our digital platforms didn't take over when we needed them to. Yep. All right. Uh, from Florida, let's go to the West Coast. Uh, Michael Weldon up in Santa Rosa, California. Michael Weldon, uh, welcome. And what do you see happening uh, right now in the industry that we need to be aware of, especially on this issue? Well, I think the last few years has probably awakened uh, a lot of senses that we weren't really familiar with. Uh, people's time is so valuable now, and they want it now, and they need it now. And if we can't provide that communication process they're going to go somewhere else so we have we have to evolve um, additionally it is staffing can't get enough staffing in the right times in the right places so we have to look at other options that uh, makes us effective when we're communicating with customers yeah makes a lot of sense and sean what are you seeing at Yavansky automotive group well I, I, much like ed and, and michael said one of the uh, the biggest areas of opportunities that I see going forward as it relates to Stella would be to fill in those gaps where you have some staffing issues or the after hours um, and to free up those advisors because of the fact that there's a lot of dealerships out there that may be on a smaller scale that don't really have their own BDC department, but the advisors are working overtime and it distracts from the customer experience when the advisor's answering the phone, right? So um, I, I can see that or a big busy dealership that has hundreds of phone calls coming in like Ed Roberts might have. Um, they could, they need somebody to pick up on the first ring, you know, so there's lots of advantages I could see for this. Jocelyn, you're working with a lot of dealers. Stella is different than a lot of what's out there. Kind of take us through it from how you see it. Yeah, I think Stella is really becoming a patron saint of the dealer. Um, I see Stella um, doing a lot of um, work at, at, at three different levels. When we look at, um, you know, the the name of the, um, the, the main job that Stella has is to take care of consumers. And we look at what a consumers want. And I think one ring, 24-7 uh, service, no hold, a good brand experience and getting their task accomplished um, you know, in a minute and a half, we're, we're getting 85% CSI scores. Um, we Stella does take a, a survey in the call at the end of the call, and we capture those and report on those. So full transparency on the customer experience. Uh, dealers are loving uh, the stats. 
uh, we have, um, you know, a, a definite uh, yield on taking care of the customer. That's our number one job for Stella. And, um, you know, at the rooftop level, I think what we're delivering is an experience that can be at par or superior to a person answering the phone. And um, the way I would describe that is the, the rooftops are overwhelmed um, by incoming calls. There are spikes during the day that are hard to, you know, staff for. Um, uh, CSI scores are a key um, measurement for stores in getting cars and showing the brands that, you know, they're doing a good job um, relieving staffing stress, relieving um you know, some dealers are are paying commissions on inbound appointments. We, you know, uh, so I think, and then the management overhead of managing uh, and training staff. So I think Stella is able to deliver at a rooftop level. And those two combined are really how we started the year. Um, we launched in March uh, and we've been working with rooftops and consumers all year long. Um, I think even more exciting is really the groups that we've been engaging with. Um, when you look at a group level, there's group savings at scale. Are you looking at groups managing a PL and looking at their um, their co their costs um, on the SGNA side, um, the call center uh, reduction, we're seeing you know twenty percent of calls going to AI is an obvious no brainer. It's great to the bottom line for a group. Um, and then at, at a group level, just the brand evolution, being able to deliver a group brand with a, you know, having an alignment with a mature AI product that yields a good customer consumer experience, we're finding, you know, the groups are interested in, in, in their brand experience and Stella is able to deliver. We are deploying um, in call centers for groups. Um, and able to do like tighter integrations for larger groups. So we've seen quite a journey, I think. Um, but uh, we, we're keeping our attention on that front line, which is taking care of the consumer. Let's talk about that. Let's let's listen in, because I understand that you're going to take us through uh, a couple different scenarios today. Uh, and we're going to do that uh, live and uh, starting with making a, an appointment for service. Yeah, we are. We're going to do a, a quick appointment and then uh, just uh, cancel that real fast. So here we go. This call may be recorded. Quality assurance. I'm Stella, your digital assistant. How can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to bring my car in for an oil change tomorrow. I'd like to drop off my car. Are you calling about the 2016 Toyota Camry? Yes, I am. Okay. Could you please state the approximate mileage of your vehicle? I'm not really sure. It's probably 15,000 miles or so. Thank you. Before we proceed, do you require any other services for your vehicle? Sure. You can rotate the tires. Please wait while I check our schedule. I have an appointment available for tomorrow at 8 a.m. for drop-off. Would that be okay for you? Yeah, that works. Would you like to confirm your appointment? Sure. I have successfully scheduled your appointment for tomorrow at 8 a.m. to drop off your vehicle. To help improve our service, we would like to get your feedback. How would you rate this call on a scale of 1 to 10? Well, I'm going to give that a 10 out of 10. Okay, so um, that's booked uh, and it's showing you the, the survey question at the end. So that call was a minute and 20 seconds. Hmm. Okay, hmm. most of your ring times just to IVR are more than that. Calling back the same dealer and we're going to cancel. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for calling Box Toyota. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. I'm Stella, your digital assistant. How can I help you? I want to cancel my appointment. Do you want to cancel the appointment tomorrow at 8 a.m.? Yes. I have successfully canceled your appointment for tomorrow at 8 a.m. Would you like to book a new appointment? No. To help improve our service, okay. we would... So 20 seconds. Okay. So show up rate on Stella, like 40% better than average. Why? 
because it's easy to cancel. <laughs> so um, if somebody wants to change their appointment, easy to do, gets a hold of the dealer right away. You don't have to hold four and a half minutes just to tell somebody you're not coming in. So we find consistently where the rooftops were um, deployed, we have a higher um, the accuracy of, of appointments delivering. Um, and then just looking at the brand experience there, we have rooftops signage all over their lobby, 24 seven digital assistant call today. Um, they're bragging about it. Why? Uh, it's so easy. It's so, good. <laughs> yeah. I it, guess it, it represents your brand. Well, it gives a good consistent, of course I muted out which dealer that was, but out front, you get to say exactly how she's going to answer the phone and she delivers your brand. Perfect. And she gets the full appointment that is injected into your existing scheduler. Stella puts all the data in new customer journey. She'll get the name. She'll get the um, your make model, puts it all in. So all of your digital is the same. No change, no change in phone, no change in scheduler, just an agent now taking care of the customer. Very easy. Ed, I'll come to you first. Let's get some feedback. I guess easy be, needs to be part of the equation. Ed, you're hearing this for the first time. Uh, observations and perhaps some questions. Then I'll come to Mike and Sean. Well, that should have gained some attention by everybody on the call because it's efficient. It's efficient on both sides. Obviously, not every call is going to go that way, but a big majority of our calls will go that way. And when we can free up our people to be able to do the things that we need them to do, then we all get better. Mm -hmm. Okay. And at your dealership, um, how are those calls taken? Is it a BDC? Is it a service advisor? What's the scenario? I have a communication center that we have 12 people in. We answer about 2,000 phone calls, uh, a little less 2,000 phone calls a day. Um, but uh, And then they have some other responsibilities as well. But first priority is answering phones. Okay. Michael, over to you. Uh, sorry about that. I like the exchange. Uh, I, I was comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. uh, my question would be if it's a new customer that is calling in that's never been to your agency, how does Stella interact? Jocelyn? Uh, the call's just a little bit longer. We could do one. Um, that call is about a minute and 40 seconds. Um, a known customer is about a minute and 20. So um, she gathers the, she says, uh, please state your first name and then spell it. Please state your last name and then spell it. What is the year, make, and model of your car? Um, if they miss that, they often do, and she'll follow up. So you go, oh, I have a Chevy, um, and then she'll say, well, what, what make and year? You know, she'll she'll oh. and she'll get that right, um, and then that injects into your scheduler. So you've got the phone number, obviously, from the um, the the dialer's identity comes through with the call. So we don't trouble them with that question, um, but we can. And then um, there's a, um, on the known customers, um, Stella's able to pull all the data. So she knows the year, make, model, and the VIN and, and puts that all in with the appointment. Sure. Sean, some feedback, some thoughts. I, I liked uh, how it, it picks up on, like on the phone number, provided they've been there before in the system because uh, listening to some BDC calls, nothing drives you nuts more than hearing, oh, have you been here before? Oh, you, yeah. the customer expects you to know that. That's one of my pet peeves with uh, people that answer the phone in the dealership. Sean, how are those calls taken at uh, at your dealership and at your group? So so we have a combination thereof. I have um, at the Honda location, I have three uh, people dedicated to the service BDC area. And then, but I also have it on, um, gosh, I can't think of the exact term, but you know, a, a, a tree, right? So if it doesn't ring, pick up in one ring in the BDC, it brings out to the advisors and to, and to my office, as well as to the cashier. Somebody's gonna answer the phone. And it works much the same way at the Acura and the Mazda stores, except for we just have a couple less people where I, have about eight people available to answer the phone here at Honda. We only have about five at the other stores. That's a great point that most and many dealerships phone systems, Mike Walden, are not intuitive and they don't pick up on, you know, what vehicle. And here Stella is already automatically populating that when that information is available. How are those incoming appointments handled at, uh, at Hansel Automotive Group? 
Well, we, we've worked off of BDC, but we've kind of separated that to stores because it's, we've gotten so busy that uh, we weren't able to facilitate with the limited staff to understand the multi, multiple brands. It's, it's, it's important that everybody kind of knows what they're working or who they're working for. Uh, so we've got uh, at our BMW franchise, we've got uh, two people at our uh, Volkswagen. We used uh, two people at our Volkswagen franchise, three at our Subaru franchise. And then our Acura franchise, it's uh, one. And then uh, our Toyota stores and our Ford stores, they get larger, uh, three to four people. And then just like Sean, we have them roll over to multiple phones. But with when you do that, it's adding time. And time creates a dynamic that when somebody finally picks up, that the first thing that comes out of the customer's <laughs> mouth was, well, that was a long time. Mm -hmm. I didn't think anybody was going to answer. Jocelyn, I'm sure that you're able to, at Stella, listen in to a, a lot of phone calls. Uh, while that rollover might seem good for the dealership, for the end user, the guest, the customer, that's probably not the best solution. Yeah, I think it's just unnecessary. I mean, we look at um, what's happening with our dealers where, you know, we've been on, we have quite a large base where we've been on for six months. Um, and we're just finding the stats are awesome. We pull 20 to 30% of calls off of the dealer. And so when the phone rings, it's more likely to be a customer that needs to speak to somebody. Stella is highly sensitive to transferring and will transfer anybody that's frustrated so that you don't end up with somebody hating you because an AI answered your phone. Um, we do talk a lot about, um, to a lot of dealers about um, I hate IVRs. I can't stand this. I personally would never want to talk to this, but when, when they do and it works, they're happy. So um, I compare, if you look at airline, hotel, anything you might have in your own life, tech support, banking, um, Stella is really a leading edge product. It's, it's, it's not just leading edge for auto. It, it's probably leading edge on the world stage of its capabilities in talking to a customer live on a telephone. The technology is um, incredibly advanced. It's a, it can have a 16 step dialogue back and forth, negotiate time slots. I hate Monday, what do you got Tuesday? It'll do all that with no human, okay? That's, you don't see that. I mean, we're, we're sort of a young company, we'll be growing but um, and we're just thrilled to bring it to automotive. Um, I, I think the pain points are extreme in this particular industry. And um, we're able to meet the industry where it is and bring something really, really innovative. Um, I'm a Silicon Valley type high tech company. Um, the only reason why we were able to do this is it, we didn't try to rip anything out or replace anything. We're not trying to change the workflow. We're not going in and building a new service lane product. I think we're able to just come in and help. Um, Stella is really like a broker between your existing infrastructure and your customer, and we can leave everything in place and, ju and just insert it. And that's where, you know, it's really a win-win. And the pain points have to be high for a dealership or a group that does not have a BDC or a communication center where the advisor is handling the phones. Talk you know, about I'll that. tell you, we have a, a large group. Um, their BDC has 20 open positions they can't fill. You know, a BDC is not a magic wand. It, it, they, they have the same problems as the rooftop. Um, and, and you have similarly at BDCs, you have like a handful of incredibly well-trained people that anybody would agree it's better to talk to one of them than anyone. But if they're on the phone and they're not free, which is most of the time, <laughs> you're at your B team or you're on hold. So um, I, I, I think Stella is going to be trained as well, may, maybe not as friendly and awesome as a human could be, but um, certainly friendly and awesome uh, for a computer <laughs> um, and, and, and get their needs met. And then um, usually better than, um, does a better job, uses natural language to map opcodes, um, can choose, you know, up to a hundred from a hundred opcodes, does a really good job taking notes, transcribes the call, gives the dealer all the data so they have the intelligence and also transfers out. Anybody that's dissatisfied can get right through to an agent. So let me uh, let me touch on a couple of things. For any dealer that doesn't have a BDC and advisors are answering their phones, this should be a no-brainer. 
but we have a large audience out there today and the audience is wanting to ask this question it's just somebody's afraid to break the ice is how do they shift to an agent when they need to because they was just in last week and they're they're asking questions about something that uh, whether it's a recheck or whether something's going on or if parts come in how would they get to an agent if they need to talk to somebody in particular yeah. I mean, Ted, should we do a demo or did you want to um, continue the dialogue? Um, Why don't you touch on that and then let's listen in. Okay. So, um, you know, basically she just, she, she transfers right out. So um, let's, let's do a few quick okay. calls so you can see how that works. Okay. Okay. This call may be recorded for insurance. I'm Stella, your digital assistant. How can I help you? Operator. I'm transferring you now. One moment, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Thank you oh. for calling Box Toyota. Oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. I'm Stella. This is terrible. I'm a gringa. Assistant. How can I help you? Habla Espanol. I'm transferring you now. One moment, please. <laughs> mm. um, now, that was horrible. And I apologize to anybody that Spanish. <laughs> um, that will transfer to if the dealer has specified uh, Spanish speaking employees, that is transferring straight to the Spanish desk. So great example there. And, and, and there's a lot of people who want to ask those questions. And, uh, and and I couldn't think of a better example than that. So great job. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I think there's a lot of room in there if they say operator to say, hold on, you know, is it possible I could help you? We don't do that yet. Dealers want those calls. Um, but we we have just done it's been such an amazing year working with rooftops. I mean, we we've we've built in all sorts of configurable items. Um we can book the appointment um in all cases, or if if there's a recall, you can make a rule that Stella will transfer recalls um so that you can look and see if you have the part um we we can transfer certain repair types like book some of them but like um it may be that you need a special technician stella is able to look and see the most recent service advisor in some of the softwares like um x time you know if if the group is is able to identify in x time um certain maintenance bays as reserved for certain jobs um stella can book those it's really sort of up to the dealer and what level they've customized their scheduler software and then we put some logic between the scheduler software um that that we can add in stella such as these rules so we can um we we can kind of do a playbook of uh how you use your schedule plus rules you might want to implement at the rooftop level, at the brand level, or at the group level. So you're um, able to, you're able to customize it to the individual, uh, the group's needs. Yeah. Like we have one, uh, one brand where um, I think the the brand requires that uh, I think most cars are covered by uh, warranty, but the brand requires that, you know, 25% of booked appointments aren't warranty repairs or, you know, rules like that, we, we can insert, um, you know, that uh, we're, we're able to do a lot at, at the, with the dealers on a case-by-case -case basis at, at this point. So an another question that a lot of dealers out there may have is I have three franchises in, in one rooftop, or I have a call center that answers for three rooftops. Um, and obviously if they're pulling the data, but maybe someone has a uh, a Toyota as the wife's vehicle and someone has a Tundra or a, a Nissan um, as the, uh, as a husband's vehicle can, how does it shift between those? Well, Stella charges by scheduler, not by rooftop. So if you've got one scheduler for two brands and one rooftop, then it's one Stella. Um, if it's a call center, the call center is still logging into 36 different dealers and 36 different schedulers. That's mm. 36 Stella. She's going to um, route. She may, we do do work um, at the call center level where Stella can route calls. So one ring, hello, how can I help you? Um, and then depending on what you say, it would transfer to Stella to book an appointment or transfer to the call center. So we we can put Stella out front to route calls 
And then um, it's that we have different scenarios, I think, depending on if we're obviously for a large um, shop like yours, Ed, um, that's a singleton dealer. Um, they're just different rules for, for different configurations. For, but you have, you oh, have ways of overcoming that, though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Michael, um, you're, you're listening to this. You're hearing the, you know, the customer wants to speak to somebody. What are what are some of your thoughts, you know, based on different scenarios that, you know, you see on a daily basis? Oh, well, I'm trying to put myself in a customer's position and, uh, and, and try to understand the information that I'm going to exchange. And naturally what the first uh, observation is on the consumer when they call in and they talk to somebody that, you know, is, is pre-recorded or it, it's a uh, computerized dialogue. Um, it, it's got to be as human as we can make it naturally. And it's got to, and it's got to flow free. And I think that's where the comfort level gets broken down with some of the various uh, companies that are attempting this technology. And, and I think it's really important that if we're going to provide the service and elevate ourselves, and, and I, and I want to emphasize elevate ourselves above everybody else to where we're the only place that somebody wants to consider to do business is that we need to make their experiences of, if, uh, is, uh, resistance and uh, and it has uh, free and it has to flow naturally and and i see that as the technology evolves uh, you know based on what i'm listening i feel more comfortable with it uh than i would uh on some of the others that i've listened to that i would say that that's not a good experience so i'm intrigued with the direction because we're going to need to help we we just can't cover all the phone calls coming in to his point, 2,000 calls a day. Can you imagine, you know, our, our BMW franchise is over 300 calls a day for that small franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it, for two people to be able to handle that effectively, it, it's it's almost impossible. Jocelyn, what about um, times when the dealership is closed? Okay, evenings, weekends, holidays. So I'd say, you know, there are other products in the market. I think their main narrative is they're the backup plan for after hours. Mm. Um, and you'd say, look, after hours, if there's no one there, then maybe this is better than a voicemail. Um, mm. I think mm. that Stella's uh, really stating that we're the better plan at any time. <laughs> so it's it, it's a very different narrative. I, 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 the other thing is I'll make a distinguishment. This is a... Um, the all reporting and a very intelligent data comes through to the dealer as well, uh, the rooftop level um, and the group level, where we're able to give them empirical data about what people are saying on the phone. Um, we've delivered in the last month um, to all existing customers a summary of all opcodes. This is um, mm. really interesting. We found about 50% of the opcodes don't exist. So, um, you know, we, we, we can give them empirical data about what people are asking for and then request that they create opcodes for that so that Stella can, can use the opcode. Um, most dealers, especially the BDCs, are using about five or six opcodes um, that are on a sticky note instead of really using, leveraging that so that you can do better planning. Um, but um, I'm sorry, I think I, I might have gone off narrative. No, no. And, and I know you're going to give us one more scenario. Wow. Uh, for a roadside assistance. Before we do, Sean yeah. Butler, let me come to you with some feedback on some of the things that you're hearing and that you may be thinking of asking as well. Um, well, you know, on the on the interactive side of it, what I've experienced, or I'm sure that any of us that have listened to phone calls, when you do get um, AI or a recording, people will just keep talking to it. They don't even realize it. At what point does Stella decide that, oh, okay, I need to shift this to a live person because I'm not getting through to this when when there's not getting a good interaction? Pretty fast. I mean, we um will attempt twice, like for example, um state your name. And i I'd say that the the main failure for Stella's system would be background noise, TV on, radio on in the car. She has a really hard time. She's transcribing everything that she hears so you'll have even lyrics from the song plus the person's voice and you know she just doesn't know what to do with it um sure. so those are the main timeouts with <clears throat> children in the car well, that's um, understandable uh, yeah. another question i was i was thinking of um at what point does it recognize 
you were talking about the opcodes and, and we all know that our system's full of opcodes that nobody uses. Um, yeah. So hopefully we, we clean those up on a regular basis. Um, what about like if somebody calls up and asks for my check engine lights on, I need a diagnostic appointment. Does it recognize those things? And does it automatically go, oh, I need to go talk to Ed because I'm not going to be able to book this appointment properly? Yeah, we, we can definitely set rules for certain repair types um, to transfer. Um, I'd say the new feature coming out in Q1 is what we call Whisper, where when we transfer, Stella stays on the phone. And then the call center answers and Stella says, you know, Ted, um, Ted has a recall. I'm transferring him now. Um, no. So that's, you know, from demand of dealers right now, we just transfer it. And so um, I think it'll be a much yeah. smoother experience to tell the call center. Um, but rules around, um, we do understand like different brands have 20,000 mile service versus 40,000 mile service versus oil and then there's oil and lube and then <laughs> so um we, we've done a lot of work in that area i think we we beat any employee on getting that right um, um by brand um we know what dealer they're calling and we know what op codes they have and we and we know how you want them mapped so right. that's so, um a big yeah, part of our setup yeah that answers it if it maps the mileage to the op codes like because i know a lot of us have it set up by mileage services and their system. So. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited about the future with connected car where mm -hmm. you know their red light's on and then when they dial, we would already know their red light is on. I mean, we're not quite there. I think it's coming probably this year mm -hmm. from the connected car space um, that will, you know, Stella would have whatever intelligence your staff would have. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll have that intelligence baked in as the OEMs connect those. Yeah, that, that was actually my last question was, it, will it work with the cars, how they have the uh, Intel links and things going on? So. Yeah. And anything your BDC can know, Stella can know. That's great. And I, I see I see this, Ed, not only as as what Jocelyn just described in the scenario that Sean gave, as what's coming, but it's what's here now. And I better get a, a good foothold for it because – you know, sooner or later, I'm, this is the way, this is what we're going to be doing, Ed. So your thoughts. Absolutely. Data is available to us and tying all that data together just makes us all look better and, and enhances the experience to our customer. So I love to hear that the connected car data is coming as well, because that's what we we use as well in-house, um, but we don't get as much as, as available. So I agree with Jocelyn, as the year progresses, that's going to become more and more prevalent. So Jocelyn, I know all three retailers on here probably get that call for emergency roadside assistance. Oh, yeah. um, what is that scenario? How does that play out on Stella? Okay, let's do a demo of that. Okay. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. I'm Stella, your digital assistant. How can I help you? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm on the side of the road and um, my car got a flat tire. Do you want to book a service appointment? No, I need help. Um, like I'm transferring you now. Okay. One moment, please. All right. So she. Thank you for calling. Okay. What? I don't want the brand to show. She transfers live to roadside service. So any dealer that has a program for tow trucks and things like that, it's just a hot transfer. She puts them right through. Um. So she understands that that language as well <laughs> let me just i'll just say that so and jocelyn then, i the efficiency factor uh you know not having the the extensive phone tree of getting transfer to transfer to transfer and being uh, able to pick that up quickly and make the appointment i, I think you gave us the time a little bit earlier uh it's very, so fast very you almost miss it you're just like well that's how it should work that's good but if you think about it you just don't see it anywhere you don't see it at the Apple store. You don't see it at Ritz Carlton, but I can get it to your dealership. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, we we think that the, that that magic of um, that, you know, there's one other thing, Stella, right now, it, after hours, if you call after hours, you can say, I want to talk to Mike Weldon and Stella will say, we're closed. Can I take a voicemail? And she will email the voicemail. Um so after hours, she's taking voicemails and booking appointments. So that would handle 
more than 70% of after hour phone calls with a, a digital solution. So rather than going to an inbox with a message, she does a transcription in an email. Um, so that's a time saver Monday morning when you come in. We had one dealer group go live, five rooftops. They wanted to test it. We turned on on, on Friday afternoon at four. I called them Monday morning to see what they wanted to do. They had 170 appointments and, and, a, and a pile of voicemails transcribed. So Monday morning, we just ripped, you know, dozens of hours off. It was just a done. That was it. They never turned it off. It was their, their they were just testing it and, and they left it on. So um, I, I just, um, there's just a lot of value in um, peeling that work off of your, your employees and knowing that your customers are okay. You know? And I'll give you the, uh, well, I'll give you the, the second to last word and then uh, Jocelyn for the last word, Ed. Hey, I think that you've showed Jocelyn that uh, you can overcome some obstacles. And that's one of the things that a lot of people are afraid of, that I don't want a computer answering my phone. And we heard it from Mike there himself saying that I feel much better about it after hearing it go through. And I think our audience feels the same way. I think you've helped overcome several obstacles there. And uh, l let us know how people can get a hold of you. Jocelyn, what's the next step? How do we set it up? A uh, dealership wants to find out more. How do we do it? Yeah, I'm laughing because um, my sales team will call everybody. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, please uh, go to StellaAutomotive.com. Um, there's a form there where you can schedule a demo. We have a national sales team. We love coming on-prem. Uh, my, my team will meet you in person in any city. Um, but you can also call, and obviously, um, we, we look forward to to working with. Um, we We... we we believe we this digital experience at the rooftop level helps the brand as well. And, and to me, it's one of these solutions that helps rooftops and brands collaborate. Um, in uh, with the changing uh, landscape, I think anything that the dealership can do to move into the future is going to be a value add for both the dealer and the brand. And um, we we serve dealers and look forward to your call. Perfect. And I can vouch for that, everybody. Uh, I've talked to dealers uh, involved with Stella. They tell me the enrollment, configuration, and go-live process is what she just said. It's very simple. So please reach out to Jocelyn, uh, either at uh, at StellaAutomotive.com uh, on the website or uh, uh, her team as well there. I want to thank the panel today so much for your time. Uh, Mike Walden, uh, Sean Butler, Ed Roberts, and Jocelyn Baudet from Stella Automotive AI. Everybody, the um, the panel from Stella here today at the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.